as a little bit at what God is hopefully trying to speak to us through this theme of peace. Uh, we're living, as we know, in very unique uh, times, and we celebrate the Christmas season during a time of pandemic. Uh, we don't have our yearly Christmas dinner. Uh, instead, we're having an online games night this week, right? Things seem totally out of whack, unusual, different, uncertain, and, and even strange. It's like during that first Christmas celebration many years ago. I want to tell you a story that was sort of close to our heart this past week, last week, um, uh, about a, a young woman named uh, Jade. Uh, Laura actually uh, had forced friends with Jade as they both uh, went to the same church when they were in university uh, some years ago. And this family, uh, they were serving actually in Tanzania um, in doing amazing things. The, uh, the wife's name is Jade and the husband's name is Julius and they served as the director and administrator uh, with Village of Hope Africa Society in Mamzwa, Tanzania. They provided vision and leadership and they oversaw the day-to-day the day -day running of three village care centers uh, that helped almost a thousand vulnerable children. Uh, they also worked along with a church there in Tanzania to see churches planted throughout the country and specifically working with their national executive uh, team, uh, planting churches in that specific city that they were in. Sadly, Jade suffered a stroke um, about two weeks ago or so, and they flew her out to uh, Kenya to try to receive some treatment. She suffered another stroke, and sadly, at the age of 32, she passed away and went to be with the Lord. Uh, such sadness, such heartbreak for such a young woman with three small kids, as you can see their picture here, uh, and such a difficult time uh, for that dear family. And just want to ask you to pray for them as well, too, as they, as Julius and the boys deal with, um, you know, having to go forward from here. But I want to read you a quote of what Julius had, had said uh, after his wife had passed away. Uh, just last week. Uh, he said, my darling, you fought a good fight. You lived a full life and you made every day count. You loved wholeheartedly and still had so much love to give. While there was so much more to live for, I am comforted to know that you are having a great time with Jesus. You've left a big hole in our hearts that will probably never be filled, but I will keep on believing in what you always said and even sang a few weeks ago, that if God is on our side, no one can be against us. It shall be well. And I think of what he's written there and even that last line, it shall be well, as a description of the experience of peace that he's feeling in the midst of such turmoil, grief, and loss, and pain. Such terrible situation that they've gone through but yet still trusting and clinging on to and holding on to Jesus in the midst of such pain. And if we look back at that very first Christmas, we see that things were really upside down. Things were really strange. Things were, were, were very difficult for, for Mary and Joseph. They were in a strange situation. Mary was expecting a child even before marriage. Joseph, when he first heard the news, thought about leaving her and divorcing her. And in the culture of that time, having a child out of wedlock was looked down upon. Maybe they faced rejections from their family and from their parents when they passed on this news, the, the social pressure that they must have faced. They had to travel a long journey all the way to Bethlehem. Their future was uncertain. What did this child mean? Why did the angels appear to us? So many questions were probably in their mind. And then Jesus came. And for you that are parents, you know the feeling that a new, that a new baby brings to a family. And, and in that strange situation, Jesus came and brought peace. Jesus came into the world and came into that family and brought peace. Not that their trials were over. They had to flee to Egypt and hide from the governor and so many other things that happened. But the difference was Jesus was there. Christmas and holidays is, is a time of family when we remember our family and spend time together. Um, we come and gather together. Of course, we can't come to church physically, but we gather together as we are online, right? And 
we're, we're going and many people are going through very unique and strange and, and uncertain situations. Maybe there's a sickness, a death, like I just shared with you, a loss of a job or problems in the family, problems with your children, um, problems in your marriage, uncertainty of the future, financial difficulties, or even just the stress of COVID-19. And there's so many things that are going on and happening, maybe in our lives and families around us and even in our church. But the second theme of Advent is the theme of peace. And I want to let you know that Jesus is here this afternoon with us right now to bring peace into our lives and to bring peace in the midst of the storm. In Luke 2 and verse 14, it says, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. In that manger scene, there was such peace and joy that that little child would have brought to Mary and Joseph in such a tumultuous time in their lives. And I want to look at just three things about peace um, this morning, this afternoon, uh, about how God is the God of peace and how the God of peace is working in our lives and the blessing of peace. The first thing we have to realize is that God, he is the God of peace. Right In Romans 15, it says, may the God of peace be with you, rest with us, abide with us, fill us with his peace. In 2 Thessalonians, it says, now may the God of peace himself bring you peace at all times in every way. Right, And so God wants to fill us with peace because he is the God of peace. When we go through a trial or difficulty, God is not seated uh, on his throne and looking down uh, from heaven and thinking, oh, what happened? Oh, what's going on? What should I do now? No, he's sovereign over all. He's a God of peace that is in control of every situation in our life. No matter what situation we're going through today, no matter what trial we're facing, what sickness we're facing, what family problem we're going through, or what burden we might have, or financial difficulty we might be that might be stressing us out, God is in control. And Jesus is known as the Prince of Peace. And it's a prophecy that was given back in the book of Isaiah that says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. How wonderful is it that the Prince of Peace lives and abides in us and works in our lives. The second thing is that the God of Peace is at work in us. And there's so many different things that the God of Peace is actually doing in our lives. He's making peace through the blood of his cross. In Colossians here, it says, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things, uh, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making what? Making peace by the blood of his cross. So here, Paul says, because of the cross, he actually made peace. He makes peace because he reconciles us and brings us to the Lord. We can have peace with God. At one time, we were considered enemies of God. We didn't have anything to do with him. Sin separated us from God. But now we can have peace with the God of peace. In Romans 5, it says, Therefore, since we're being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. That's an amazing thing that we sinful human beings can have peace and reconciliation with God. There came a woman once to Jesus and she was weeping at Jesus' feet and, and anointed him uh, with some ointment. And, and others looked at Jesus in disbelief, wondering if Jesus would actually permit this. But Jesus saw her love and blessed her not only with salvation, but blessed her with peace. In Luke 7 verse 50, it says, and he said to this woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And that's the blessing of salvation is that not only does he forgive us and reconcile us and justify us and bring him to himself bring us to himself he blesses us with peace you know the gospel is known as the gospel of peace in ephesians it says paul says that this is the gospel of peace because it imparts peace jesus as that little baby coming into the world as the prince of peace brought a gospel of peace in the book of acts it says it's the the good news of peace right in First Thessalonians, it says what this God of peace is also doing. Do you know that not only has he forgiven us and reconciled us and brought us to himself and justified us, but he's also sanctifying us. It says here, now may the God of peace 
himself sanctify you completely. God is doing that work of sanctification. Now, we might not always like it because he gets at areas in our lives where maybe we're straying and we're sinning and we're, we're not maybe you know, living right before the Lord and God is working on those and he's sanctifying us. But it's the God of peace that's doing that. You may think there's no hope for you. You may think that you'll never change. You, you, maybe you're thinking you're always making the same mistakes over and over again. Do you think God is worried? No. He's at peace because he is faithful. We can trust in God because he's faithful to sanctify us. Not only sanctifying us, do you know that God is also delivering us? Here in Romans 16, it says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Now, this seems like an oxymoron here. It seems like these are two contradictory thoughts. How can a God of peace crush Satan? How can a God of peace be involved in a battle or be involved in war? It seems like two things that are contradictory to each other, right? But it's the God of peace that's actually delivering us, setting us free, and doing awesome things to, to help us and to bring us to himself. It's, it's the God of peace that's, that's setting us free from all of, our, all of our oppressions. What kind of oppression are you facing in your life today? Do you know that Christ has already won the victory for you? Satan is defeated. The price has been paid. The victory has been won. You know, there's an, there's an Old Testament story about a man named Gideon. And Gideon was called by God to be a deliverer, to fight for the children of Israel and deliver them out of the hand of the Midianites, right? And when God revealed himself to Gideon and God called Gideon as a man of war, do you know the type of uh, name that God gave Gideon or the type of way that God revealed himself to Gideon? It, God revealed himself as the God of peace, right? It, it seems very strange. Why would God be calling a man to be a deliverer, to fight battles, to be a man of war and say, I'm the God of peace that's calling you? Well, in Judges 6, it says, and Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. It seems like two contradictory things, but it's because God is a God of peace that he wants to reconcile people together. He wants to bring us to himself. He wants us to be at peace and rest and comfort and joy, that he fights our battles. He, he saves us. He reconciles us to himself. He justifies us. He sanctifies us and he delivers us and gives us the victory. It's the God of peace doing all of these things. It's that Prince of Peace, Jesus, who came into this world to do all of these things for us. And he's also equipping us to do his will. In Hebrews chapter 13, we see, Now may the God of peace, again, here's the God of peace again coming up, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant. What is he doing? Equip you with everything good that you may do his will. Working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, sometimes we think we're incapable of fulfilling God's will. Maybe we get worried or uncertain of ourselves and, and we lose our peace. Maybe we think, I can't do what God is asking me to do. Or I, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to share the word of God. I don't know how to, how to lead somebody to Christ. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. And, and I can't go and serve in, in overseas missions. Or I can't do this ministry in the church. Or Pastor Roger asked me, I can't do that. Well, do you know that it's the God of peace that gives us peace? And through that peace that he imparts to us, he's equipping us for every good work, right? He's equipping us through his peace. He'll ask us to do something, and he just doesn't leave us there. He fills us with his peace and rest. He says, now go and do it, because I'm with you. My peace is with you, right? So if we're worried, if we're uncertain of ourselves, sometimes we lose our peace. But it's the God of peace who's equipping us. And, and when he asks us to do something, he'll give us peace and everything else we need to accomplish as well. And the third thing and the last thing is the blessing of peace. Do you know that there is a blessing of peace that he wants to impart to us? In John 14 and verse 27, it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. 
Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The same peace that Jesus had, resting in the hope of his heavenly father, trusting in the power of God, peace to go to the cross and do the will of God, that same peace is ours. You know, it's interesting about this peace because this peace is not dependent on our situation and is not dependent on whether everything is going smoothly in our life and there's no trials or problems or difficulty. No, this peace is dependent on our relationship with Jesus. So much so that if we're going through a storm, if we're going through trials, if we're going through difficulty, we can have peace in the midst of such calamity. That's the peace that Jesus gives right? The world is filled with so many problems and hardships. It's easy to get troubled. It's easy to get afraid. The world can give us a sense of temporary peace. We can get a promotion at work and, and things are going well and there's a sense of peace. But then you walk into work and your boss calls you in and says they're cutting back. Then what happens to that peace? It was a temporary peace. It was a peace based on the security of your work, not of your security in Jesus. Maybe there's news of a, a vaccine and maybe that gives us a little bit of peace. But then when the numbers start to rise and we look at it, doesn't look good. What happens to that peace? See, the peace that God gives is independent of our situations and circumstances. It is the knowledge that God is in control of our lives. And even when this life is over, we will forever be with the Lord. And that's the difference of Advent. It's the remembrance that Jesus came into this world. And he comes to make all the difference. He has come. Peace has come. See, in Jeremiah, it says that he has thoughts of peace towards us to give us an expected end. We can rest and trust in our Savior because he's the one that's come to give us peace. In Colossians 3 and verse 15, it says, And let the peace of Christ rule your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. See, many times there are other things that are ruling in our hearts. There's worries that are ruling in our hearts. There's doubts that are ruling in our hearts. There's fears that are ruling in our hearts. But the blessing of the Lord is peace ruling in our hearts. One time when Jesus and the disciples were in the boat and there were winds and waves and a big storm that they were facing and the disciples thought they were going to die. They didn't realize that the Prince of Peace was with them in the boat. And that's why it says in Mark 4, verse 39 and 40, he says, And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? They were not able to trust in God in that situation. What are the waves and storms and tempests in your life today? Christ can come into a crisis in our lives. Christ can come into a, a difficulty, into a trial, into hardships in our life. We just need to trust in him. When Christ enters the situation, then things begin to change. We can read story after story in the New Testament. When Jesus came into a situation and peace came into that situation. And that's why I've titled this message, Peace Has Come, because Jesus has come. And when Jesus comes into the situation, peace comes into the situation. And when Jesus comes into our life, peace comes into our life. That's why he promised us in John 16. He said, I've said these things to you, that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you'll have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Remember what the Lord has done. He has overcome the world. He's defeated the devil. He's won the victory. He saved us from our sin. He's healed us from our sicknesses. He given us a promise of meeting our needs here in this life and even better the promise of life with him in for all eternity it says you're in me you will have peace in jesus jesus is the word of god we can have peace in the word of god do you know 13 times the apostle paul says in his letters grace and peace to you from god the father and jesus christ our lord 13 times he repeats this greeting in all of his letters, do you find trouble and worry filling your heart today? The word of God is filled with so many promises that can strengthen our heart today. Give our burdens to the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Bring your petitions to the Lord in prayer and let him fill you with his peace. 
Philippians 4, a very familiar verse. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. See, God's peace comes and it surpasses understanding. When God fills us with peace, we can be going through such a terrible trial, but still be peaceful. As I share that story with you about Julius and Jade and, and to hear some of the things that he's writing and, and saying and, and the trust that he has in Jesus in such a terrible and difficult trial and situation of his life, it can only be the peace of God that's helping him. It can only be the God of peace that's helping him through such a difficult trial in his life right now. And that's why it says the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God's peace is like a guardian. It's, it will be like a protection, a wall against all other things trying to come and rob us of our peace. In this Christmas season, remember that the Prince of Peace came to bring us peace. I love this verse uh, in Isaiah, and I'll close with this verse in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 and 7 a prophecy about jesus we read the first verse already but i'll read it again for unto us a child is born to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace now look at this line of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forever. I love that, that, that line that says, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. What does that mean? Is that day by day, moment by moment, week by week, month by month, year by year, decade by decade, century by century, peace is increasing, increasing, increasing. That's the beauty of God's government. That's the beauty of God's kingdom. That peace continues to increase. So the peace you had yesterday, God wants to give you more peace today. And the peace you have today, God wants to give you even more peace tomorrow. Because of the increase of his government and of peace, there's no end. It'll continue to grow and grow. That's why Peter talks about it in, in, in First and Second Peter. Uh, it, he talks about peace being multiplied. Peace growing, multipl multiplied peace, maybe exponential peace because it just keeps growing and growing. See, this is the God of peace. This is the Prince of peace, right? The, the Holy Spirit of peace. He wants to work in our lives and impart to us peace. Let me close by telling you the story of this lady named King Fu Fan Tai. There was a very famous picture of her, and I'm not going to show it, but you might have seen it. It's a famous picture of, of Kim that made the world gasp and, and was really a defining moment in her life when she was running naked in fear during the Vietnam War. She was a young girl and, and that picture was, was seen all over the world as a depiction of the, the, the terrible hostilities and, and violence and pain that came to pass on, on some of the natives there in Vietnam. And, and she was just as a young girl in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and the, the South Vietnamese were, were bombing the trade routes that they were trying to get some of the Viet Cong rebels at that time. And she says that even after four, more than 40 years, that the pain and harm and hurt that she felt still has repercussions. And she received treatment for, for the burns on her arms and on her back and on her neck. But she said even the, the emotional and spiritual pain was even worse. And I want to read you a few quotes uh, from her testimony that she shared with Christianity Today. And I'm just going to read you the quotes because I think her words are very powerful. She said, And yet looking back at the past five decades, I realized that those same bombs that brought so much suffering also brought great healing. Those bombs led me to Christ. See, peace is not the omission of hardship and difficulty. But true and lasting peace is that even in times of trial and difficulty, we can find peace in Jesus. She said, for years, I prayed to the gods of Kayo Dei, which, was, which is a religion, for healing and peace. But as one prayer after another went unanswered, it became clear that either they were non-existent or they did not care to lend a hand. And so I continued to bear the crippling weight of anger, bitterness, and resentment toward those who caused my suffering. 
the searing fire that penetrated my body, the ensuing burn bats, the dry and itchy skin, the inability to sweat, which turned my flesh into an oven in Vietnam sweltering heat. I crave relief that never would come. And yet despite every last external circumstance that threatened to overtake me, mind, body, and soul, the most agonizing pain I suffered during that season of life dwelled in my heart. It was an emotional suffering for her. She said, I was alone as a person can be. I could not turn to a friend for nobody wished to befriend me. I was toxic and everyone knew it. To be near me was to be near hardship. Wise people stayed far away. I was alone atop a mountain of rage. Why was I made to wear these awful scars? Then she started reading some books and came across Christianity and she started to study it. And she said this, First, despite all that I learned through Kai O'Day, that there were many gods and that there were many paths to holiness, that the burn of success in religion rested atop my own weary, slumped shoulders, Jesus presented himself as the way, the truth, and the life. His entire ministry, it seemed, pointed to one straightforward claim. I am the way you get to God. There's no other way but me. Second, this Jesus had suffered in defense of his claim. He had been mocked, tortured, and killed. Why would he endure these things, I wondered, if he were not God, if he were not, in fact, God? My salvation experience happened, fittingly enough, on Christmas Eve, as we've come to the Christmas season and we're in the season of Advent. She said it was 1982 and I was attending a special worship service at a small church in Saigon. The pastor spoke about how Christmas is not about the gifts we give to each other, so much as it is about one gift in particular, the gift of Jesus Christ. As I listened to this message, I knew that something was shifting inside me, how desperately I needed peace, uh, how ready I was for love and joy. I had so much hatred in my heart, so much bitterness. I wanted to let go of all my pain. I wanted to pursue life instead of holding fast to fantasies of death. I wanted this Jesus. So when the pastor finished speaking, I stood up, stepped out into the aisle and made my way to the front of the sanctuary and said yes to Jesus Christ. And there, in a small church in Vietnam, mere miles from the street where my journey had begun amidst the chaos of war, on that night before the world would celebrate the birth of the Messiah, I invited Jesus into my heart. And when I woke up that Christmas morning, I experienced the kind of healing that, I, that can only come from God. And listen to what she says here. She says, I was finally at peace. Jesus came to her life. Peace came because Jesus came. She said, nearly half a century had passed since I found myself running, frightened, naked, and in pain, down that road in Vietnam. I will never forget the horrors of that day, the bombs, the fire, the shrieks, the fear, nor will I forget the years of trial and torment that followed. But when I think about how far I have come, the freedom and peace that comes from faith in Jesus, I realize there is nothing greater or more powerful than the love of our blessed Savior. My faith in Jesus has enabled me to forgive those who have hurt and scarred me. It has enabled me to pray for my enemies rather than curse them. And it has enabled me not just to tolerate them, but to truly love them. Friends, that's the difference that Jesus makes in our life. That's the difference that peace can have in our lives. And today, if you're troubled, if you're weary and worn, today, if you're full of bitterness and uncertainty and hatred and anger, today, if, if your life is, is, is not doing well, I want to invite you to invite Jesus to come. Because when Jesus comes, peace comes. And if you're troubled, if you're worried, if you're anxious, whatever situation you might be in today, know that the Prince of Peace has come to give us peace. And so let's rest and trust in Jesus. And as we invite him into our life, we invite peace. Jesus has come and therefore peace has come as well. Let's sing to the Lord this song, peace has come and let's worship the Lord and ask the Lord to come into our lives and let peace reign supreme in us.